This video will show you step by step what you need to do in order to file your individual income tax return with SARS. We're also going to give you some tips on how to make sure that you're getting the correct deductions to reduce your tax liability and possibly get a SARS refund. So you're going to log into SARS e-filing. You're going to go to this will be your homepage and click on returns issued. So we're going to do the 2021 return now. Then down to personal income tax, click on that. You come to this page and you might find that the return is sitting there where it says no records available. If it's not sitting there, you can go to the top right where it says the drop down arrow, click on 2021 and say request return. It will then come up here where the gray bar is and you can click on the tax return and then start completing it. So you then come to this page and you're going to click on my tax return, ITR 12. And then you're going to come to, besides the, the couple of questions that SARS gives you, just to check through those first before you click OK, you're going to come to the form wizard, which is essentially just allows you to input data relevant to your situation, your tax situation. So make sure you read through all these carefully, all these questions carefully. And the next page, we're going to show you some important deductions. So this is now the bottom of the form wizard standard questions. And we're going to go through a couple of important deductions that can possibly give you a, a refund, depending on your entire tax situation. But first one is, did you pay any medical expenditure, including medical scheme contributions made by you or your employer towards a medical scheme where you are the principal or main member? In other words, do you have a medical aid scheme, you're the main member, and you're contributing to it, whether it goes through your payroll or not, you must click on yes. That's an important deduction as a medical deduction. It can give you a nice credit to reduce your tax liability. Um, especially if you if you haven't if it hasn't gone through your payroll, the medical aid, and you're paying it yourself every month, then you gotta make sure that you're including this deduction to make sure that SARS then takes it into account when you file your tax return. But if you have a South African ID, you still need to press yes, but it should be pre-populated and we'll get down to that later. So that's the first one is medical. Two is, like I said, there are quite a few questions that we're not gonna go through everything, just the most common ones. Two is, did you or your employer make any retirement annuity fund contributions for the benefit of yourself? So generally, Retirement annuities are, 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 are RAs. They sometimes go to the employer, but usually people pay it out of their own pocket, debit order every month. And you must make sure that, you know, I didn't have one, but if you have an RA, you must make sure you tick yes. And it's also, like I said, if you have an ID, it should be pre populated. But it's very important to make sure that your RA, if you've contributed, is properly reflected there. Otherwise, you, you might not get the deduction and the possible tax refund. So make sure you tick to yes if that is applicable to you. Third one is also very common. Do you want to claim a deduction against a travel allowance? So a lot of people will use their own cars for work and their employer will give them allowance. So 1,000, 2,000, whatever, every month for business travel. So if that is applicable to you, make sure you click yes. You're going to click and insert, it's quite obvious, you'll insert, insert all your cars details, odometer, closing, opening, readings, and your business travel, and just make sure you have a logbook that's appropriate to SARS, because if, if you get that right, you get your logbook right, your travel claim right, and you've had business expenditure, I mean business kilometers that you've traveled, you can get a really nice reduction in your tax liability, so that's number three. And then another one is quite common is on a deduction, but extra income, did you derive income from letting a fixed property? So you got to rent your property, let out, make sure you click yes and declare that to SARS. So those are the most common ones. The bottom one here, you'll see, bottom right, did you receive any other income? So you might have capital gains that you need to declare to SARS. You might have a trade or business, that kind of side hustle. Make sure you click yes, and then you see at the bottom, the comprehensive questions will then open up and then just go through those to see if what is applicable to you or not. Okay, so now you've done the form wizard, you've done all the questions, you've gone through them carefully, you made sure you've ticked what's applicable to you. Then just make sure your personal details are, are correct and contact details addressed and the like. 
So just go through the basic information source has for you, make sure it's correct. Um, can you change contact details address? I've got another video for you that I've made. I'll put it in the description below showing you how to change your source details. Make sure your bank details are correct. Obviously, if you get a refund, make sure it goes into the right account. Okay, so just a bit further down. Employee tax certificate information, RP5, is essentially you got you got a job and your employer will then send this directly to SARS. So it should, like I said, if you have an SAID, it'll be pre-populated and you must just make sure that it's correct, correlates with what your work has given you. You might have more than one RP5. And then taxpayer information income. Some of this also, if you have an SID, you'll be pre-populated, like interest, the bank interest. So the bank sends the information directly to SARS. So just make sure that's correct. And you did, you know, SARS hasn't maybe missed something or that you still need to declare, or maybe they've made a mistake and they've over-declared it. You just need to correct that as long as you've got, obviously, the supporting documents to, to back it up that what, what you have is correct. And then if you have other kind of REIT dividends, that kind of thing, it might also be pre-populated. So dividends... Uh, dividends are exempt, uh, but not REIT dividends, so make sure you declare those and just go through that to see if there's any other else that's applicable to your tax situation considering all of the income that you receive. Then the very important is taxpayer information deductions. So you're going to click on that one. And now we've got the medical deductions like I was speaking about earlier. So this, like I said, if you have an SID, it will be pre-populated. So make sure you should get a you know, tax certificate from your, your medical agency and make sure it's correct. It correlates to what SARS has. Uh, it's obviously very important. And then just at the bottom, yeah, the 4005 code is should be on that tax uh, information. I mean, the tax certificate from, from the, the medical aid provider. And then you'll see a 4020. Just have a look through if that's applicable to you as well. So... That's very important to make sure your medical is all correct so that you get the proper proper credit um, on your when your return is now submitted. Okay, so now you're going to presume you've gone through everything carefully. You might have to put your statement of assets and liabilities as well in, depending on which questions you've picked in the form wizards. So now you're going to look at the top. I've, I've submitted mine already, so it's not going to show it, but it also says submit return to SARS or calculate. So I like to just do a calculation beforehand just to make sure that I haven't missed anything and you know I can then kind of get an idea of what my refund or if I need to pay in before I actually submit the returns. So I usually press calculate before I submit it. It will, will save it will save it. It will should save it when you do that. So you calculate and I'll take you back to this page now and then at arrow one it'll say view calculation. You can view it and then it'll open up in a new tab if the number right at the bottom is a negative it means a refund if it's just a normal number it means you owe SARS so that just gives you an idea of any tax liability or refund before you actually submit the return so now you've done that you say you're happy with it uh, you're going to come back to this page you can go back to my tax return and then you're going to click submit return to SARS so that's the video for today hopefully you found it helpful leave a like if you thought it was helpful to your life